Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Day Chats. If you hear something in the background that is a continuous noise, that is because I have the fan on because it is 8 a.m. and it's already like almost 80 degrees. So just excuse the noise. But welcome back, you guys. It has been a minute. I have not recorded an episode in what feels like forever, but really it's been about four months since February. That was the last time I uploaded an episode. And frankly, that is because life got super crazy. My life was just insanely busy. I had no time to do anything fun. So now that life is getting back to normal, I have more time. I am coming back to this podcast fully head on, totally strong. I have a bunch of ideas that I actually worked with um, with Andrew many months ago uh, to have an idea of what I want to upload. I had a schedule set up, all these things ready to go. And then I just never ended up actually recording anything. Partly because I genuinely was super busy with work and the other part because I didn't want to use the little free time that I had to record because I was always so tired and I generally just needed a break. So I had to prioritize giving myself that break in order to be able to get through the struggles of having a new job, which I'm not sure if I mentioned before. And if I did, then bear with me and I'll say it again for those of you who may be new listeners, but I did recently get a promotion at work. My responsibilities have shifted and completely changed. So I spent the majority of January and February trying to learn how to do my job. And then February through March was when I was officially in my role. And that whole time, it was me just trying to figure out how to do my job. The person who was in the position before me had already been gone. Um, They moved on to a different company. So they trained me as much as they possibly could, but there were still so many things that I didn't know how to do. So a lot of my free time was spent researching and trying to learn how to do my job. I remember I would get to work super early, leave work late, and then still come home and work a few more hours trying to learn how to do my job. And it was a really stressful time. Looking back now, I'm glad I put in the amount of hours that I did. But these past few months from February to literally this past Monday have been the craziest, busiest time of my life. I am not kidding when I tell you I was so busy. I barely had time to eat. I barely had time to text anybody back. The only people I would prioritize to text back immediately was sometimes my parents, but the only people that I really like forced myself to respond to were my testers because those were the people that uh, worked directly under me. So I wanted to be there for them and be that support for them if they needed me. So other than that, anybody else who texted me, they, they just honestly got pushed to the back burner. I responded when I could and I left it at that. It was a crazy, crazy time for me, but I'm just glad that everything is now settled. I've really learned how to do my job. I'm still learning how to do some things to finish off the season, but overall it's been it's been a good experience and now that I have more free time, now I will have pretty much all the time to be able to record episodes. So Looking back to that sheet that I had made with Andrew, now I am really excited to be able to finally record and talk about all these topics that I just know will be amazing. So enough about that work update. Let's move on to something that's a little more interesting. And again, keep sharing a little bit more than I normally would, but that is a okay because I have to fill you guys in. So in the last episode that I uploaded, it was all about how I broke it off with my um, person, with the person that I was with. And, you know, I did this whole thing. The queen is free, yada, yada, yada. 
And I really, I really did break it up, break it off with him. But shocker, being the dumb bitch I've always been, somehow, I don't remember how, but we ended up connecting. And it was like this back and forth thing again, where we would go through all the scenarios. You know, he would ask me to come and move out to a different state with him and a different city. And, you know, that was something that we would talk about all the time is that he wanted me to move and I didn't want to move because first of all, no matter how much of a dumb bitch I am, and this is not to say that if you do what I'm about to say, that means that I'm judging you. No, there's no judgment in this community here, but we can acknowledge how much of a dumb bitch we can be. But no matter how much of a dumb bitch I am in many different levels, That is just one that I'm not in yet because I really do prioritize my career over anyone. And and by that, I mean my career comes before any man, always, no matter what. Um, Until I'm married, until I have said I do, no man will come before my career and myself because I have worked way too fucking hard to let a man try to tell me or try to dictate where I can and can't go or, you know, have to start over just because a man wants me to move. Absolutely not. So I, you know, I told him, hey, you know what? I just started my career here. I'm really doing well. I'm moving up the corporate ladder. I'm not going to give that up just to go move and be with you because what do you have to offer? You know, and we had that conversation and he didn't have much to offer for me to want to move out there. And I don't mean him paying for me to live out there. Over the time, I realized there was just many qualities in him that I didn't like that started to overpower the qualities that I did like. Um, Like I said, we did go back and forth. Um, He would always tell me that he wants to marry me. You know, he told me, move out here with me and that's it. We're done. Like, you're my one and only. I'll put a ring on your finger. Like, I want to marry you. I want to be with you. Like, we can have this perfect life out here. And as tempting as it sounded and as nice as it sounded, you know, then he would go on and ignore me for a couple of days. Or then he would go on and you know, yell at me for being on the phone with him and texting someone back because he would assume that I was texting a guy. Or if I was watching TikToks, he would get upset because I'm not paying attention to him. He would disregard when I would tell him, hey, I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. He would keep me up all night and not let me go to sleep and start a fight and get upset and call me names if I didn't want to talk to him. He would make me feel guilty for not wanting to talk to him when I was simply tired. I, you know, communicated with him that, you know, hey, I'm really busy. I don't have time for this. And he still made me feel like I needed to put some effort into this relationship that we had or whatever it was. I wouldn't even say it was like a formal relationship at all, but it was a type of relationship, some kind. I don't even know how to explain it. But this person made it so difficult for me to let go, not even because of the feelings that I had for him, because honestly, the feelings for him went away a long time ago. But what was there for me that kept me with there was the constant shift of yes and no, the hot and cold. And to be honest, it was like the mild toxicity that kept me there. I don't know why I, you know, I don't know. I I don't know why. Um, but it, it was comfortable to know that I had him there. Um, my relationship with the other guy, which I hope you guys remember, but there was another guy that I had um, been talking to and getting to know for the past couple of months, actually. And my relationship with him wasn't going too well in the sense that, you know, it was kind of dying down. It was very much a platonic friendship. You know, we've, we hung out a couple times and confirmed that, you know, our relationship is more of a platonic friendship. And and I have something to share with you guys about that one in a little bit. So when we get there, I'll go ahead and share. But pretty much it was dying down. So the only relationship I had at that point was with this one guy. 
And so to make it a, a long story short, I we had this constant back and forth, hot and cold. And I just felt like the easiest way to have him not annoy me or bug me in my life is for me to keep him in my life so he knows that he can communicate with me. And so that way he wouldn't. Because knowing that he couldn't have me is what made him try even harder. And it was really frustrating for me because no matter what I did, he still found a way to communicate with me. And sometimes I would give in. So I just decided, okay, I'm not going to block him on anything. I'm just going to have that communication aspect open because if he knows it's open, he's not going to communicate with me. And for the most part, it worked. Like I said, you know, it was a very hot and cold thing, but there came to a time when he just started being so annoying and he would just treat me like shit and would just talk to me in a way that I would never allow someone to talk to me. And that's when I started putting my foot down exactly, exactly because of that, because I'm not going to let anyone talk to me in a manner like that where they're telling me, are you fucking kidding me? You're on the phone. I bet you're talking to some guy right now. Like, first of all, you're not my boyfriend. So back the fuck up. If I am talking to another guy, that's none of your business. Okay. I get to do whatever I want. Okay. So sit down and remember who you are and remember who you're talking to. And that's that. So... I really didn't hit my breaking point until a couple of weeks ago. So let me tell you what happened leading up to the moment. So let's say um, a couple weeks ago, starting Monday, that was the busiest week that I have had that month. Like I was like, I'm telling you guys, I didn't really have time to eat. I would be tied to my desk at all times. And I didn't have time to text people back. I didn't have time to have conversations with people. So he kept texting me over and over and over again every day that week, multiple times a day that week. And I would read his messages. I would open them, but I just I didn't have time to respond. And at that point, I knew how he was. I knew how he always manipulated the conversations to make me feel guilty for not being there. So I, it's just I didn't have time for it. I didn't want to make time for it. I just wasn't going to put in that effort. So I just didn't text him back. So moving forward, you know, he would hit me up on Snapchat, hit me up by texting me. He called me a couple of times and I just didn't answer. That happened the whole week. And eventually I did end up texting him back and I said, hey, this week is really busy for me. I'm not able to have conversations. So let's talk another time. Left it at that and thought that was a pretty good way of communicating. Hey, I don't have time to talk. So like, stop hitting me up. I'll talk to you when I have time. But apparently that wasn't the case for him. He, you know, saw on my snap stories that I had gone off on a mini vacation that same week. And a part of the reason why I was so busy, it was because I was, you know, trying to wrap up the season and I had to work twice as much to make up for the fact that I was leaving work early because I was going on a mini vacation that weekend. So I finally get to treat myself to this mini vacation and, you know, get to relax and have a good time. And, you know, I go out that Friday, post some snaps. He sees them the next day, post some stuff. He sees them. Then I go back to the Airbnb where we're staying at. I take a nap for a couple of hours. I wake up to like a bunch of Snapchats coming from him and text messages from him saying that, He's going to block me and he's calling me a bitch and saying that he, you know, if I don't respond within a certain amount of time, then he's just going to block me. And then because I was sleeping, I never called him, never texted him back. So I wake up to all these messages of him saying, hey, bitch, bye, bitch, um, and all these things. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to put up with that. I'm done putting up with him treating me this way and talking to me this way because I know better than, you know, allowing some guy talk to me and treat me this way. Some guy that I've tried to cut it off with multiple times. He has no respect for any boundaries, 
at all. And I'm not saying it's all his fault because I play a big part in this and allowing him to come in and out of my life that way. But I finally said no more. I never responded, never gave him the time of day. I simply blocked him on absolutely everything, deleted him off of everything. And I even blocked his whole family's um, contacts as well, because he has in the past tried to contact me um, from other people's numbers. So, you know, I, I, I said I was done. I'm done. And, you know, it's been a couple of weeks and I have no desire on unblocking him. And if he listens to this, you know, get get some help, dude, <laughs> like learn, learn boundaries, learn how to respect them and, you know, take care of your needs because you you got some issues and just isn't working out for you. So, yeah, um, that was the biggest the biggest thing. And, you know, something shorter, like I mentioned earlier, the relationship I had with that other guy that was kind of just dwindling down. I did see him a couple times and it just feels more like we're just friends. Um, but even then, like not too long ago, I had texted him for, I, I don't know what I texted him for at that point. I was a little, a little, um, I had been drinking a little bit with my friend. So I did text him for something and he texted me back saying like, what do you want? And keep in mind, we had been texting and talking really good uh, leading up to that point. So he basically just messaged me and was like being so rude to me and saying like, what do you want? Like, why are you calling? And I was like, like, what the hell? Like, why are you talking to me that way? Like, you weren't talking to me like this yesterday. You've never talked to me like that before. So I was like, you know what? This was right after the whole um, other guy situation. So I was like, I am not going to let this guy treat me the same way the other guy treated me. And trust me, it's no comparison at all. This guy that I'm talking about right now, he has never treated me in any negative way. But I also am not going to allow him to start treating me that way or talk to me in that way. I would never want just even a platonic friend to talk to me that way. So I said, you know what? let's cut it here. It is what it is. You know, you're cool. We're cool in the sense of like, I'm not going to bring this up. So I never ended up calling him back, texting him back. And he like, you know, blew up my phone asking me if I'm okay. Um, and I was just like, nah, like we're good. We're good. We're good. Because that's, that's what it is. Like, I'm not going to put in this time and energy into people that just don't value my presence in their life. And that's not to say that I'm like this, um, I don't know, like, like I'm the most important thing in their life. No, but I do value myself. I do know the, the worth that I have and what I contribute to a relationship, whether that's romantic or platonic. And I'm not going to be somewhere that doesn't value that. I'm not going to put myself or allow myself to be in situations any longer with people that don't value me, that don't value my presence in their life. I'm just not going to do it. There's no time for that. So I just said, you know what? Like, that's it. And I, I haven't talked to him since then. He has made plenty of efforts to try to talk to me, to try to see me. And I just don't respond or I give very minimal communication if I do respond um, because I just, I don't have interest in that. You know, I, I don't want to put an effort in, into places or pour my love and energy into places where it's not going to be reciprocated. I'm just not going to do that. It's either you want me in your life and you're going to value me and you're going to make me feel appreciated and you're going to reciprocate that love and appreciation and respect that I offer, or, you know, it, it is what it is, you know, that's cool. You know, I'm not saying everybody needs to like me, I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea and that's fine. But I just know that I am not going to put myself in a position where I'm not wanted. So that's that. That's been my situation. I have been on a couple of dates that didn't really work out. I mean, I went on a date with this one guy and it was really fun. I had a really great time with him. But the entire time our date, we went out to dinner. So we were out for about three to four hours pretty much the entire time, it was him talking about his mommy issues. And while I empathize with a lot of the things that he was saying, a lot of the time I was like, all right, well, let's talk about something else. You know, like, I don't want to spend the whole time talking about your mommy issues. 
So, I mean, that's a little tip. If you are going on a first date, maybe let's hold off to do trauma dumping some other time on another date, but definitely not on the first one. Um, yeah, so I pretty much stopped talking to him after that, which I do feel bad about how I went about it. I never really communicated that I just wasn't feeling it. He did text me after the, our date and said that he really enjoyed it, really liked talking to me, liked seeing me. And while I also enjoyed it, there were things about him that I just didn't, they didn't sell me on, on wanting to be with him or wanting to continue a relationship. And to be honest, was it shitty of me to do what I did? I basically ghosted him. I mean, I kept up the conversation for about a week, but then I really just allowed my work to be an excuse as to why I was busy. Because prior to that, I was still just as busy, but I would, I would make the time to talk to him. And I think that's the biggest thing about this is that I've been on this journey where I've been so busy. I realized that you make time for the people that you love and the people that you prioritize. And you make time for the people that you care about. So I will never accept someone's excuse when they say, oh, sorry, I couldn't talk to you for a week. I've been super busy if, you know, we're pursuing something. Why? Because no matter how busy I've been, I've always had five seconds to text someone and say, hey, I have a really busy day today. We can talk later. We can talk tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful day. That's it. So there is no excuse. There is no excuse if somebody comes to you and says, oh, sorry, I couldn't talk to you for a week or I couldn't come see you. Um, I just have no time. People get busy. We're grown. Like we're adults. We're working. We're doing things. People get busy, but people make time for the people that they care about. People make time to respond to the people that they prioritize. So if you find yourself constantly having someone or giving someone the excuse that you don't have time and that's why you're bailing on them or that's why you're ghosting them or that's why you're not responding. Take a look at where you stand. If you're on the receiving end, take a look about how they're treating you. You know, like, are they at least making time to communicate that they're busy or are they just using their busyness as an excuse after the mask to justify why they haven't talked to you? It's one thing to communicate, you know, how their day is going, how you know, what their schedule looks like. And then that way, you know, you know what they're doing in the term, in the sense of, you know, that they are not readily available to have the conversation. So you're not going off your day wondering, oh my gosh, did, does he just not like me anymore? Or is he bored? Like, why isn't he texting me? He's switching it up all of a sudden. And this doesn't mean you're insecure. I never want to hear someone say that because you question where you stand in someone's life when they're constantly doing this to you it means you're insecure. No, it just means that they are not prioritizing you. And then you need to know then at that point, do you value yourself enough to say, you know, hey, I understand you're totally busy. I get it. I'm busy too. But at least, you know, let's communicate about it. Let me know that you're going to be busy. So I don't think that you're just not interested. And if they are interested and they do care, they will make an effort to communicate with you so you don't feel that way. And I don't care what anybody says. I will die on this hill. If they wanted to, they will. So I'm going to leave it at that for that whole segment because I'm just going to keep on going on this little rant. But yeah, if they wanted to, they will. And I will never accept anything less than that. So there's that. That, that really sets up where my standards are right now. I put up with some things that I shouldn't have in the past and I'm just done with it. Not only that, but I it's summertime and the summertime is my favorite time to be single because I can go out and do whatever I want. So I have deleted all dating apps. Um, I have wasn't really on them anyway to begin with. Um, but I just deleted them anyway because I was like, you know what? Like there's things that I know about myself that I need to continue working on. And I just don't feel comfortable going out or like I have the time. Like I said, I'm free, like in terms of time, like I, <laughs> I have the time to, you know, build these relationships with people, but I don't have the energy to do so. Like, I don't want to sit there and tell someone all about myself and what I like to do for fun or, you know, try to schedule time to go see them. I just don't really want to do that right now. I would rather just 
have a good time. I'm going to New Orleans in a couple of weeks, for example, for Fourth of July weekend. So I'm really excited about that. I'm planning my parents' um, 25th wedding anniversary, wedding party ceremony. I don't know what, <laughs> what it's called. I'm just referring it to as a wedding, but I'm planning that whole thing on my own. So I have so many other things going on that I would rather focus my time on that than have to worry or even want to try to get to know someone. And there's so much inner work that I want to do on myself and actually prioritize myself enough to do it. Now is no better time. So we're just going to do it. There's so much to come. Um, I will absolutely update you all on all of the self care and self-work that I'm doing. And I, you know, I am going to share with you guys as we go on. Um, but I do also want to start tapping into a little bit of different topics here and there. You know, this whole podcast is about showing our not so great moments and talking about things that most people don't feel comfortable talking about that. But another thing that I wanted to talk about was talking a little bit more about our finances. A lot of my listeners are between the ages of 23 and 35. So there's about two age gaps or age ranges there. So I really wanted to talk about what it was like to manage your finances. So I'm really excited to have an episode all about that. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys, you know, learn a little something here and there because financial literacy is something that people don't talk about. People don't really know too much about. And that's why a lot of us are in the place where we are or we were and having all this credit card debt or all these debts and not knowing how to dig ourselves out of that. So I'm really excited to be able to talk about that with some special guests. So there's so much that I'm excited about. So, you know, we're back, we're here, we're here to stay. So I think moving forward, now that I know how my job works during my um, peak season are the times where I'll have um, some time off. So maybe we'll do the podcast now in seasons. Um, so season one, season two, that way I have some off time where I don't have to worry so much about the podcast and it'll be great. So Thank you so much, you guys, for listening. There's so much more content to come, and I'm so excited to record um, and tell you guys all about my summer and all the fun stories that are happening and just tell you guys and, and be real with you all about everything that's been going on and everything that I've been learning. I'm still going to therapy, so I'm still learning things every day. Um, so as you know, we continue going. I will obviously share everything that my therapist teaches me, and I hope it helps you guys too. And until next time, embrace the day.